Hi everyone, Richard C. Wilson here, coming to you from Maui today. This is module number 14 in our $100 million Rainmaker series. Um, this is an important one. Without this, you will not close very many sophisticated investors or it's gonna be bumpy and you're gonna lose a couple along the way you don't need to lose. And this module is on preparing for and surviving due diligence of investors. Um, if you are ready for investor due diligence, then more often, a higher percentage of the time, you're going to get approved and get a capital allocation. These are things that cost almost nothing to get done, to get ready. Um, so there's no reason not to do everything I'm about to say. One thing is to make sure that you are ready for tough questions. You don't get emotional or defensive about it and that you're able to respond very quickly. I don't know how many times we work on deals and we ask questions and then somebody takes five weeks to reply, three weeks to reply. They never reply and we have to follow up after two weeks saying, hey, do you have any answers to these questions? It's basically like, hey, do you want our capital? Are you, are you serious about raising capital? Um, and so that's something that really slows down deals. Really need, people, really need to be responsive, precise, actually listen to the questions and address all of the questions when being asked. Otherwise, people just may not want to do business with you. Uh, one of my billionaire clients who've done a lot of transactions with has taught me that if someone's really bad at answering emails and they're always slow or always bad, that's a sign they're not someone they really wants to do business with. They either don't take their business seriously or they're distracted or they're not taking him seriously or they don't work enough to actually communicate with people and get back to them. And if they're really bad at communications, then, you know, that's something where he makes him 80% sure he just wants to move on. So it's a form of due diligence alone. It's just how well or poorly you communicate. Another couple of ideas. Um, if you can try to get some sort of due diligence report on you in your data room, I'll go into what a data room is in a second, a due diligence report on you or an investigative background check uh, done on you, your partners or your team and have that available for investors so that they don't have to go and pay for one themselves. Depending on who you get that check done through, you may or may not be allowed to share it uh, openly with others, so check on that. Um, but getting a background check done and then documenting seven references so that someone has called and checked seven references for each of your main partners or your number one CEO and having that on file can be very helpful. That way when you go to an investor, you can say, here are seven reference checks, here's the background check, and here is what's called a data room, which is just simply a secure area where you have all the files that someone doing um, intensive due diligence to maybe invest with you would want to review. Uh, those could be information on your backgrounds, on full resumes of your founders, on your track record, uh, in-depth financials, financial models, pro forma models, tax returns, balance sheet and income statements, etc. Um, that way, whenever there's questions, they can dig into that data room and find what they're looking for. So those are a couple of important things. Another couple of things to watch out for is that some investors really wanna to get to know who you are as a person. So some of them use a strategy called a liquidity test. They'll have you come into their office and you may do well interviewing there, but then they may take you out for happy hour and give you a couple of drinks and see if you talk about all the lawsuits you're in, the divorce you're going through, how you're suing your ex-partner, what you really wanna do with your life, et cetera. And many investors who manage billion dollars plus portfolios have told me, that many people pass the formal due diligence in the office with flying colors, but then they take them out for a liquidity test or happy hour and they fail there miserably. So that's quite common, they said. It's not, it's not a surprise when that happens. And so just know that that is sometimes being done. Also, sometimes I've heard of investors taking somebody out for lunch. You might order a hamburger and they will on purpose tell them to burn your hamburger to a crisp or to bring you chicken instead of a hamburger. Um, and then just see what you do. Do you flip out? Are you super rude and start cussing at the waitress? Do you just eat the burnt hamburger and don't say anything? Um, there may not be any right or wrong answer, but there's some responses that just alert them to who you may be. If that's how you react to people in the world when things don't go your way, then that's kind of an interesting due diligence kind of psychological test in itself. So keep those types of things in mind. Um, speed is really important and also make sure that you're preparing for due diligence that is a good half level above where you are now. If you are typically raising capital at $100,000 per check and you're wanting to raise that and go to the family office level or wanting to go from family offices to institutions, then be ready for institutions when you're at family offices. Um, be ready for the family offices even if you're really going after 10 million net worth investors right now. 
The reason why is that you might stumble upon the best investor lead of the whole year. And if you're not ready for it, you don't survive that due diligence. Also, being ready ahead of time allows you to tweak and learn and adjust. And your toughest investor at the low level will help you get ready for the family office level, help you get ready for the institutional level. And a lot of those investors just appreciate it and they'll allocate to you faster because you look more buttoned up than everyone else they're looking at. If you have a data room, or you have the background checks, if you have the reference checks, if you have everything buttoned up, an amazing level of due diligence uh, materials ready for them, then they may just say, oh, well, I didn't know that institutions required those that they may allocate to, to complete a 30 question due diligence questionnaire. And that's great that you guys have that because I ran out of questions after 12 questions and I didn't know what else to ask. And you had 18 more smart questions in there with answers in your PDF, your due diligence question, master due diligence questionnaire PDF. And that's a great example of just being ready for the next level of investor that helps you close the lower level of investor. So have that mindset, be, be more sophisticated than your competition, not saying you know, that the wrong mindset is basically saying, oh, is this what everyone else does? Well, if it's what everyone else does, then it's not going to give you any edge. What you want to do are things that nobody else is doing, but all the investors wish you would do. Or most people raising capital do not do, but all of investors would appreciate and it's going to make things move faster. That's the right type of mindset. Not, you know, I had some FBI guys who had a private equity fund and they came to me and they said, hey, we want to raise more capital. What's your advice? And I said, well, you're telling me that because you're ex-FBI that your due diligence is super thorough. Why don't you have super thorough due diligence on yourself? And their question to me was the, the, is the exact opposite of what, what I was just um, saying you should do. They said, oh, well, does everyone do that? No, not everyone does, but you are claiming to be having an edge as an FBI, ex-FBI agent. So for sure you should do that um, and get the question out of your mind of, oh, is that what everyone does? Um, and that makes it a good idea. That's, that's the wrong way to think about it. So I hope this module on getting really prepared for due diligence has been helpful and kind of changes your mindset on the whole topic. If you're not ready, you'll get caught flat footed. If you're really ready, you will convert investors faster. And the biggest investor lead you get the whole year may take you more seriously where they might otherwise look at your asset center management or your revenue and think that you're not really ready for an investor at their size. Uh, this was module 14. Our next module is going to be finding investors and finding more of the right investors that we talked about when we defined your investor avatar. So we'll see you on that module next. Thank you.